But as you remember, last week I started uh, a new series uh, and I'm continuing from there talking about things that destroy us, things that destroy us. And today my subtitle is Bad Friends. Things that destroy us, bad friends. Yes, last week we talked about bitterness as something that destroys us. A bitter person becomes self-destructive. But the other thing that destroys us is bad friends. Bad friends. Almost invariably, you will be influenced by somebody. A friend. The kind of person who has access to your emotions, to your feelings, and to your thoughts. And let me just ask you a few questions. Whom do you talk to when you need emotional support in tough times? When things are going wrong in your life, when you feel low and down, whom do you talk to? Whom do you think of sharing breaking news with? When something new has happened in your life, who is the person you want to get on the phone with and call or text or, or send an email to to share that breaking news with? It could be something good that has happened to you or probably a gossip that you want to share with somebody else. Whose advice do you seek when making decisions? You want to marry, you want to take a job, you want to travel, you want to invest. Whom do you talk to and whose ideas do you bounce off your thoughts or whom do you bounce off your ideas on? If you want to do something, whom do you test those ideas on to get their feedback? Who is that person that you are able to laugh with or talk to about your dreams? The names that came up in your mind as I ask these questions are the people you call your friends. The people who have access to you, to your innermost being, to your thoughts, to your feelings, to your emotions. They are your friends, not your acquaintances, not just people you meet and say hi, hello, to or just chat with for five minutes or ten minutes but people that you invest emotion into these are your friends and in life you will end up with a few friends along the way some stay with you throughout some stay with you periodically but the time they stay with you they have such a significant impact on who you are and whom you become. Please stand with me in the book of First Chronicles, uh, First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, verse thirty-three, and that is our opening text for today, as we talk about bad friends and how they can negatively influence us. First Corinthians, chapter fifteen verse 33 and we read do not be deceived evil company corrupts good habits do not be deceived evil company corrupts good habits i will put it another way don't joke with it Bad friends will mess you up. This is the 21st century version of what I just said. Don't joke with it. Bad friends will mess you up. I was speaking to a gentleman who looked very noble. And at the time I knew him, he looked a very decent noble man. But he began to tell me about problems he used to have when he was growing up as a young man. At this time, he's quite elderly, probably in his almost 70s. And he told me about how he used to 
womanize and the agony and heartache he brought to his wife and 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 as he spoke to me and told me about all that he did in his 30s and 40s probably even up to 50s i couldn't imagine this noble person doing what he said he did and so i asked him the simple question why did you do that because you don't look like the kind of person who would do what you say you did and his answer was very simple friends friends bad friends will mess you up don't joke bad friends will mess you up who are bad friends I'll give you four things that bad friends will do to you and then later I will go to discuss three specific bad friends you must get rid of in your life Sp three specific ones but generally the first thing is that bad friends influence you with wrong suggestions they are able to throw ideas your way they suggest things to you they tell you where to go what to do what to experiment with they make fun of your principles and sometimes make you feel as if doing the right, right thing is wrong and they suggest all kinds of things to you and sometimes their suggestions influence you adversely secondly bad friends introduce you to destructive or self-defeating habits like the man i mentioned in my introduction a good man a decent man noble looking but with a very very sad painful rotten history now you look at him you can't imagine he did what he did but you ask him why and he said friends bad friends introduce people to all kinds of things you ask people who drink today uh, why why did you start drinking I'm, I can guarantee probably majority of them will tell you friends. People don't start drinking on their own. They do it with friends. Why did you start smoking? Friends. Why did you start womanizing? Friends. Why do you start menizing? Friends. Why did you start this negative lifestyle? Friends. Friends. You are where you are today because of the kinds of friends you have been making in life. They will introduce you to destructive or self-defeating habits. Thirdly, bad friends isolate you from sources of good counsel they would make sure that you will not get to places where people can advise you and counteract what they are telling you with good advice and they do that by undermining the people who could give you good advice they will tell you that those people are no good they will undermine if you go to church they will undermine the church they will undermine the pastor they'll tell you oh all the pastors are wrong or oh, everybody does it and as a result make you feel comfortable doing the wrong thing they isolate you from sources of good counsel fourthly bad friends infest you with their own weaknesses whatever is weak in their lives they pass on to you they make you to become like them they create you in their own image and likeness 
And when you are strong in one area and they are weak in the other area, they want you to be weak with them. As a parent, I can tell almost always who has entered into the lives of my children. When the children were growing up, you can tell by the kinds of things they do and they say. All of a sudden, your child starts speaking in a certain way. And you can tell somebody is influencing them because that's not how they are. All of a sudden, they want to eat something and not eat something. They want to dress some way and not dress another way. They don't want to go someplace or they want to go someplace else. You can always tell who has entered into their lives. Because when people enter into their lives, something about the people infests them so you can have a child who learns and does well in school and all of a sudden they are not learning and they are not doing well go and check somebody has come into their lives and he's infesting them with his weakness because he's not passing he needs company so bad friends will infest you with their weaknesses because they are not comfortable with your strength your strength makes them feel weak and so they would want you to be at their level. If you don't like sinning, they would want you to sin. You don't like drinking, they want you to drink. You don't like smoking, they want you to smoke. You don't like chasing women, they want you to chase them. Why? Because it makes them feel good. That they are not alone doing what they are doing. If they are failing in class, they want you to fail also. So they can tell their parents i'm not the only one who fails so and so also failed they need company don't become company to somebody who is going down if you need to make friends make friends with those who are going up the question i want to ask you who are the friends in your life who are the people who speak into your life who are the people whose counsel you listen to? For those of you who are married, when you were going to marry, whom did you discuss your choice with? And what did they tell you? Maybe you wanted to marry somebody else. And they said, oh, he has no money. You will suffer. So you went to marry the other person. And he had money, but you suffered. Whose counsel did you ask? And do you continue to ask? And do you really know the people in your life? Do you understand them? Do you know what motivates them? Do you know what they want to achieve in your life? Because if you don't assess your friends well, they can mess up your life. Don't joke with it. Bad friends will mess up your life all right so there are three specific bad friends you must avoid at all cost if any of these friends and i'm going to describe them if you are one of them repent because we we can be bad friends ourselves if you're one of them repent but if the friend you have has these characteristics you need to do something about this because don't joke with it they can mess up your life they can really create problems for you so three specific they are not the only bad friends but i just thought through the profile of bad friends and uh, i actually started with a list of 21 characteristics or 21 bad friends and i just settled on three the first bad friend you must deal with in your life and i hope you are not the same person is the per friend i call the scornful the scornful who is the scornful well they are described in psalm 1 the first psalm and the first psalm describes some groups of people you're not supposed to associate with and the scornful are included there Say, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, 
nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Now, somebody would say, why did you not choose the sinners or the ungodly? But, you know, because when he talks about the ungodly, he says walking. When he talks about the sinners, it says standing. But when he talks about the scornful, he says sitting. It, it means it's a permanent thing. When you are walking, you can move away. When you are standing, you can take a step. When you are sitting, you are seated. All right. So the scornful are the people you are seated with. Permanent friends. Okay. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he did meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. But the verse 1 really tells us the kinds of people we must not associate with and i focus on the scornful who are the scornful let me give you the characteristics of a scornful person number one a scornful person makes fun of the things of god they make fun of the things of god they may even be church be in church and be scornful they after church all they do is crack jokes about what happened and make everything look trivial funny and inconsequential they are the scornful they mock god they mock the church they mock pastors they mock other christians they make jokes about people how people dress how people walk how people talk how the church does something and all they do when they come to church is look for funny spots in the church. Funny spots about how somebody led some singing. Funny spots about how a certain usher is dressed. Funny spots about how the church itself is. And they only trivialize, mock, devalue and degrade things related to God and spirituality. That person is a scornful person, even if he's in the church. Sometimes the scornful are in the church. Most times they are not in church. There are people outside the church. They may not be born again, but they are your friends. And they are not neutral concerning things of God. They actually go out of their way to diminish the value of the things of God and make fun of spiritual things. And they're always cracking jokes at the expense of God. They're always cracking jokes at the expense of the church. They're always cracking jokes at the expense of Christianity. Those people are scornful people. And if you are seated with them, you have to get up and walk away. The second thing about scornful people is that they use intelligence and humor to defend sin when you tell them something is wrong they will try to philosophize it intellectualize it make it funny and defend it they use intelligence and whatever it is whether it is you it's about a bad habit they have developed whether it's smoking taking drugs drinking alcohol bad habits they've developed along the way instead of accepting that these are bad habits that i must get rid of they have an intellectual argument they are the ones who would say well even the bible says you must drink for your stomach sick that's a scornful person they misquote misrepresent misinterpret the scripture even jesus christ turned water to wine so I must drink. They have an intellectual and most times scornful people are very intelligent. They are very bright. And if they are your friends, they have great arguments. They have good arguments. They are very intellectual and they, they, they poke loopholes in your spiritual beliefs. And make you feel that what you believe has no validation. But all they are doing is defending what they are doing they don't want to be responsible for their actions so they use intellect humor jokes to get away 
with what they are doing those are scornful people if they are your friends pretty soon they will mess you up third characteristic of the scornful is that they glamorize sin without any shame they make sin appear grand and adventurous he's the kind of person who when you are conversing with will tell you about what they have done they are exploits in evil but they speak it with glamour and grand gestures and grand language and grand experiences and they make it feel as if you are missing something grand they make sin appear appetizing if you have a scornful person in your office monday morning they come and tell you all the salacious details about what they did and everything they're telling you is wrong but they make it look very glamorous everything they're telling you is sinful but somehow they tell it nicely and then you begin to wonder am i missing something is there something i'm missing if he's a liar if he's cheating people he tells his crooked stories and uh, about his crookish ways in a very nice manner he's a scornful person they make evil look good they glamorize it it's like what happens when you watch advertisement about things that everybody says is wrong when we used to advertise cigarettes the box of the cigarette says it will kill you the one smoking it says is a good life now how can it it will kill you be a good life but that's what glamorous how glamorous people can make sin to appear the one who is advertising the alcohol have you seen some of those alcohol advertisements on television we have a lot of them i'm not going to name anybody's brand but you watch them and it's dramatic and everything is so fun and it's mixed with fun things like playing football or doing something that makes you feel good and and the person picks up that alcohol and drinks it and licks their lips and make you feel like ah, oh, there is something you are missing all they are doing is taking in liquid in their mind in their bodies that will distort their minds that's all they're doing taking in liquid to distort your judgment so the things you would not normally do you would do that's all it does all that alcohol does is to reduce your defenses against what you know to be wrong you have the boldness to talk to people and to do things but it is glamorized dizziness and a temporary craziness is bought with money and people talk nicely as for me i just like my brandy this way i like my whiskey this way i like and i like it with uh, uh, what is it uh, something on rocks <laughs> you know and it makes you feel like wow this on rocks is just dizzying liquid that is frozen with ice blocks that's all but it's glamorized and you have people who make you feel like oh you are missing out on life oh you don't know life oh you don't have any girlfriend and you are 24 oh you don't have any boyfriend you are 23 oh you don't know life and and you are trying so hard to live by godly principles but they make you feel so filthy for being right that's a scornful person if you have a friend like that they are not to your advantage the scornful person 
pressurizes you to join them in their sin. They do not like to sin all by themselves. They need company and companions. And they will pressurize you to join them. They will pressurize you every day. They will bombard you with images, with words. And when you know it is wrong, they will still pressurize you. Let's take a little bribe. Let's steal a little. Let's do that a little. And they keep doing, telling you, telling you, telling you until one day if you are not really strong, you give in. The first friend to get rid of in your life is a scornful person. He may be somebody you like very much, but if he's scornful, he fits the description, he's not a good friend. The second friend that you must get rid of is the angry friend. The angry friend. Friends who are always angry. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 24 to 25 says, Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, do not go. Lest you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. An angry man, an angry woman is not a good friend. The Bible says if you become friends with them, you will become like them and you will, you will trap yourself with destruction. If you yourself are permanently angry, you need to work on that. But if you are not and you have a friend who is permanently angry, you need to do something about that. Now, what are the characteristics of an angry person? Number one is that they have a problem with everybody. They have a problem with everybody. Nothing satisfies them. Nothing pleases them. To them, the whole world, quote and unquote, stinks. They have a critical spirit and cannot see anything good in anybody else apart from themselves. If they are in a place, give them a day or two, they will quarrel with everybody. And sometimes they will justify it by saying, well, as for me, I'm different and people can't stand me. Now, if the whole world cannot stand you and you are still in the world, then probably you're not supposed to be around here. In this world, we'll be angry. We all get angry. One thing or the other, one time or the other. But it's not a permanent feature. And it's not against everything. If you have a friend who is always criticizing everybody, constantly critical, they are an angry person. They have their own internal issues to deal with. And you have to leave them to go and sort themselves out. But if they are your friends, the Bible says they will cause you to set a snare for your soul. They have a problem with everybody. Secondly, an angry person is always bitter, unforgiving, and vengeful. They cannot forgive anything wrong that is done against them. They have no capacity to forgive. And when somebody falls into their track they plan for long times detailed to exact vengeance they easily run into rages they easily get angry they blow their top very easily and for those people they are the happiest when they have quote and unquote shown people. That is when they are happiest. When they are saying, Do you, did you see what I did to him? Did you see it? Did you see how? Did you see how? And that's, that's the only time they are happy on earth. All the other times they are angry, upset, frustrated, discontented until they show somebody and pay back somebody and take revenge on somebody or punish somebody or undermine somebody then they get excited and start narrating their exploits with great enthusiasm and fulfillment 
that is an angry person the bible says don't be friends with them because when you're friends with them you will learn from them they will destroy you don't be friends with an angry person and if you are that don't be friends with yourself but there are angry people for whatever the cause of their anger is that's not what we are discussing it could be they were mistreated maybe somebody didn't treat them well whatever it is but they have permanent anger do you know there are some people their face is always squeezed always angry anytime you see them as if they are quarreling with somebody even when they are chatting you 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 sense anger and rejection and 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 uh, repel from them even when they are cracking a joke it is not a nice joke it is a destructive joke at somebody's expense angry permanently angry if your friend is like that he may be your best friend if your best friend is like that you have to do some evaluation of that relationship the third thing angry people do when they are your friends is that they create a siege mentality within you they create a siege mentality what is a siege mentality they make you feel that just because they don't like the whole world you also must feel that nobody likes you they incite you to feel that the whole world is against you they cast suspicion on other people's motives and push you to see only the negative sides of people's actions they always have a conspiracy theory about everything they cannot rejoice about life so they will tell you who is trying to destroy you why your mother did what he did why another friend in the office gave you a present somebody gives you a present they'll have to interpret the present to you somebody says hello to you they have to interpret the hello and do you know how he said the hello he didn't say hello he said hello and they'll interpret it and make you also feel that the whole world is against you it's a siege mentality you always feel somebody is coming against you and it's because you are friends with an angry person you always feel that way you feel the world is against you you feel your friends are against you you feel your parents are against you you feel sometimes even if you are married an angry friend can destroy your marriage men listen to me carefully an angry friend will make you lose your marriage because you converse with them one two three you go home you look at your wife and get angry and your wife hasn't done anything but you are angry you are angry with the food you are angry with everything you are suspicious about every phone call you are suspicious suspicious about every text message suspicious about everything when people begin to act that way check who has become their friend an angry man has entered their lives it's the same with women when an angry bitter woman enters a good woman's life all of a sudden they change they suspect everybody they suspect their mother-in-law suspect their in-laws suspect their husband suspect everybody they can't accept anybody because they always believe somebody's working deep somewhere that's an angry person and sometimes you know you can find couples who are doing well husband and wife are doing so well nothing is wrong and all of a sudden the man gets angry sometimes the wife will say i don't know what i have done you haven't done anything somebody has entered his life an angry man is infecting him with anger and believe you me when people get infected with anger nothing you do will appease them because it is not a reaction to what you are doing it is an infestation a viral infestation 
that is within the person and they're acting just because of the influence that is why you have to check the friends that people are coming especially couples these days when husbands and wives work together and they work in different offices and all of that you have to check who is coming around each one of you because certain people can enter your husband's life and break your marriage some people can enter your wife's life and break her marriage angry people the fourth thing about angry people is that they control you through unjustified anger they control you through unjustified anger they seek to own you so that you have no mind of your own they push you to have enemies who have not offended you and when you fail to become enemies with those people they get angry obsessively angry it's a control mechanism just out of nowhere they, they get angry boom and throw a huge fit or tantrum and because you feel you want their friendship you have to always cower down and try to please them when you have a friend like that you are being manipulated you are being controlled it is not a useful beneficial life enforcing relationship it's a destructive relationship be careful of angry people when your own best friend begins to get angry and bitter because maybe they've been mistreated by somebody and now you see bitterness like what we learned last week beginning to happen you have to warn them about the consequences and if they persist with that anger and bitterness you have to start withdrawing because if you don't they will infest you there are many people in this life who have fought people they had no business fighting they have fought battles they they had no business fighting but they got there because they were around angry people so be careful of the angry person if he or she is your friend the first is the scornful the second is the angry they will destroy you the third friend you have to stay away with because if you don't it will destroy you is the backstabber the one who stabs you at the back sooner or later you have one or two friends like that if you haven't had one wait you get one Jesus had his own backstabber the son of God son of God had a backstabber Judas you turn your back there'll be a knife behind if Jesus had a backstabber you have a backstabber too you need one to teach you life's lessons everybody needs a backstabber not too many just one will survive for a lifetime too many of them will kill you before you finish your 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 life's journey so be careful of the backstabber psalm 35 verse 13 to 16 says but as for me when they were sick my clothing was sackcloth i humbled myself with fasting and my prayer will return to my own heart I paced about as though he were my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. But in my adversity, they rejoiced and gathered together. Attackers gathered against me. I did not know it. They tore at me and did not cease. With ungodly mockers at feast, they gnashed at me with their teeth. The psalmist is describing a backstabber in psalm 41 verse 79 there's another description of backstabber it says those who hate me whisper together against me against me they devise my hurt an evil disease they say clings to him and now that he lies down he will rise up no more you understand it the, the, the backstabber says oh what has happened to this guy he will never recover an evil disease claims to him and now that he lies down he will rise up no more verse 9 even my own familiar friend 
in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. A backstabber. A familiar friend. It's your bread or more Ghanaian eats the egg after you have cracked the egg yolk and he eats the whole yolk with you that's a familiar friend he's there he seems to be your friend you trust him or her knows all your secrets until they use all the secrets they know against you so what does the backstabber do number one they offer friendship but practice hypocrisy the backstabber if you want to know who is a backstabber most of the time they speak a lot about their friendship and their their love for you they are the first to talk about how much they are committed to you they speak highly who oh, as for you i love you you are my own brother you are you are like my flesh i will flesh i will do everything for you i will do that and they promise you everything but get into trouble and you see their true colors the thing is that most of the time if you are sensitive to to, to the holy spirit you can tell a backstabber very easily they speak all the nice things but anytime they praise you and talk about their love for you something in your heart tells you this thing uh, you can't tell what it is but it's like uh, something is uh, about it but the person is professing love cooking food for you doing all the nice things but yeah there's, there's something little clues you get from them the way they talk little comments they make certain looks in their eyes just make you feel like they are not really 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 genuine about this listen to your heart because if you don't they can destroy you many people have been destroyed not by their enemies but by their best friends jesus was not destroyed by the pharisees and the sadducees and the scribes they were nice enemies but they couldn't do anything the high priest couldn't do much about jesus none of them could touch them jesus until they got an inner chamber person judas iscariot in all likelihood the person who has the keys to destroy you most is close to you as for your enemies outside you know they are enemies so your defenses are up anytime you meet them but what about a false brother you lower your defenses you share your secret you take them to places you introduce them to people you're going to marry you introduce him to your fiance or your fiance and they know all the problems you are having in the relationship because you confide in them about the relationship and they are the ones who are advising you about how to manage things and then all of a sudden every information they have received from you is now deployed against you and the next time you know the person you were supposed to marry says god has spoken to him or her and whom did God speak through? Your best friend. The downside is that a lot of us are too quickly to make be best friends. We tell people everything in our hearts. And maybe one day I'm going to talk about friendship and the different chambers of your life. And how to allow people and the protocol for moving people from the outer court to the inner court, from the inner court to the innermost court. There are protocols to that. But some people go and pick everybody, somebody from outside, and in one week he's in your inner chamber. And you are telling them intimate things. I mean, sometimes, believe you me, I have sat on planes. I don't know whether because I'm a pastor, people want to confess their sins to me or what. But I sit in an airplane, and sometimes people don't even know me. 
and we start chatting we just happen to be sharing seat you are an a i'm in b who, who, who are you i'm from ghana i'm from and we start talking and then the people start talking about things so personal that i said you have no idea maybe i'm the fbi i'm cia you have no clue who i am but people trust easily i hope you are not one of those until people have been ushered into your innermost chamber you have to be careful what you tell them because not everybody can handle your secrets even jesus had problem with one who couldn't they offer friendship but practice hypocrisy secondly they spend what you have without sharing theirs that's one of the things you are going to learn about backstabbers these are some of the signs they take advantage of your love and your generosity without giving back anything if you give to them they will take but they will never give back anything take your money take your clothes use your car use your uh, goodwill and when you need them just do something small they have excuses that is a potential backstabber they are on a one-way traffic of devouring and consumption next week i'll talk about the third thing that will dis destroy you next week and uh, we'll go into that a little bit more but be very careful of people who take and 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 never give anything they make relationship with them tiresome you you get weary because you are doing everything as if you are their children you are carrying them on your back and those people you help them with everything but they never give back they are dangerous people because when they get a new sponsor they will fry you like pancake <laughs> the backstabber cannot stand your achievements in life they can't stand your achievements in life when things go well for you they find ways of diminishing what has happened you tell them something good you say oh do you know i got a promotion in the office and instead of saying oh praise god oh oh that's good news oh oh that's nice oh congratulations i'm really happy i'm proud of you they don't do that you tell them i've been promoted they say oh eh. oh i got mine last week if your friend reigns on your parade your friend takes it upon himself or herself never to be happy for you they are not a good friend it's a bad friend you tell them about your achievement they also brag about theirs as if you've got this i have 10 times you buy a nice shoe you show them they say oh this one eh, it's nice I, I actually got one last year you got it last year the guy has got it this year be happy for him be happy for him that he he's he's also arrived but backstabbers can't handle your achievements and when you see people like that get ready the the day you turn your back look behind there'll be a knife there they can't stand your success they can't stand your achievement even if you are achieving far less than them they can't stand it they can't stand it they are the kind of people who when they see you with anything nice and they're supposed to be your best friends they see you with any nice clothes they feel nervous that's a potential backstabber the backstabber betrays you for personal advantage they betray you for personal advantage when it suits them out it suits them they will sell you out and they will scheme to get whatever you have they are sellouts they are betrayers and if your best friend is a backstabber you are on the path of destruction quickly let me close with this choosing good friends how do you choose good friends 
I'm just going to run through it quickly. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 26 says, The righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. The righteous should, should choose his friends carefully. Carefully. That's why I said that there is a protocol for friendship. There are people who are in your life, they will be in, in the outer court. They may be your friends for 30 years, but they will always be outer court people. There are people who come to the inner court and they stay there for life. They may be your lifelong friends, but they are inner court. And there are people who are innermost cause, holy of holies people. And under the Old Testament, only one person, the high priest, went to the holy of holies. The people who become your holy of holies friends, there are not many. If you always say, tell people, this is my real best, 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 best friend, and about 10 people are like that, you are not, you are not genuine. You yourself, you have, you have your own psychological problems. You have to look at Jesus. He had the outer court people. The many people who followed him. Then he had the 12 disciples. And then he had the three who were his inner court people. You have to know how to graduate people from one level to the other. Some people never pass, so keep them out. Even if they say they love you, but you don't love them, keep them out. I don't see why love should be a force. You know, is it by force to love you? So I ask for you, I visit you, I visit you, you don't visit me. I love you, I love you. Is it by force? Okay. Five questions you should ask. I'm going to run through this fast. If you want to choose a, a friend, a good friend, ask yourself, are they committed to a godly life? Is this person committed to a godly life? If yes, they qualify. If no, then review. Second, do you admire and respect each other? Is there mutual admiration and respect for each other? Or is one person respects the other, the other doesn't respect, and so on? Do you admire and respect each other? Thirdly, do you help each other to be better? When you talk, your conversation, does it improve you? Do you leave a gathering and feel, wow, I've become better. Maybe I went in angry, but you know, after just talking to my best friend, I've been cooled down and I know how to handle things better. Does, does, do they improve you or they prey on your weaknesses and your shortcomings? Do you help each other to be better? Fourth, are you there for each other in time of difficulty? Are you there for each other in time of difficulty? The Bible says a friend is born for adversity. You can really tell your friend when there is adversity. And finally, do you celebrate each other's achievements? Do you celebrate each other's achievement? Are you happy for each other? Are you just happy when good things happen to them? When your friend comes and says, you know something that happened? Somebody just gave me $100,000. Do you get jealous? Or you say, wow, that's good, that's good. And you're not saying that's good because you think he would give you some, but you're saying that's good, that's good. And even if he wants to offer you some, he said, no, no, no. Oh, I'm just happy. Keep it. You have more need. Are, are, are you happy for them or can you celebrate? If you can't celebrate that person's success, you are not a good friend. You are not a good friend. And if you can't celebrate, I can guarantee you, jealousy will be born in your heart. And when jealousy is born in your heart, you look for a day to betray the per other person. If you study the Je Judas, you know where the seed of anger and jealousy was sown. When something good happened to Jesus, somebody expressed extravagant 
wealth on Jesus. And Jesus said, ah, he couldn't celebrate with Jesus. He says, this thing should have been used differently. And Jesus gave him an answer. He got offended. And from that day, he was looking for a way to betray Jesus. Who are the friends around you? Take an inventory of your friends. Today, when you go home, take an inventory. Cross-check. And if somebody doesn't fit to be your friend, start the process of disengagement. Don't always get hurt by friends and come and say, ah, my friend, they betrayed me. They betrayed you last year. They betrayed you this year. They betrayed you. They, always your friends are betraying. Then you have a problem. You are a needy person who is not able to stand on what you believe in. If your friends are leading you astray, you are a nice man, now you are chasing women, and you know the friends are doing it, you go and play golf. It's not just golf. It's also introduction to womanizing. Introduction to drinking. Introduction. Whilst you are swinging the club, you are learning new skills. If that is the new friend, your golf partner is leading you astray, take note of that. Because very soon, it will destroy you.